Good afternoon, students. I am Chaitanya, Assistant Professor in Mathematics, working in the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, located at Dundigal, Hyderabad. Today, my topic of discussion is uh, Bayes' rule, uh, which is an important element in the fifth module that is Bayesian methods for inference and information theory. So, let us start the start our discussion. Before going to the statement of Bayes' rule and its properties and uh, the meaning and applications, I'd like to uh, take a chance to mention the greatness of Thomas Bayes, who is the person who introduced the Bayes' law to the world first time. Thomas Bayes, English statistician, philosopher, and uh, Presbyterian minister, and uh, he publicated a book, Introduction to the Doctrine of Fluxions Defending Newton's Calculus, uh, which is a very, very noteworthy contribution, and he received the Fellow of the Royal Society in the year 1743. Noble Award and uh, in 1763 an essay towards solving a problem in the doctrine of chances which is also very very famous work done by Thomas Bayes and uh, after Bernoulli Bayes has contributed uh, a good amount to the statistics and probability to his uh, to his uh, Work, especially it is named as Doctrine of Chances. It is published in the 1763. So now, uh, before understanding the base rule, we must understand what is the conditional probability. Of course, conditional probability is also introduced by Thomas Bayes. Um, so the credit again goes to Mr. Bayes only. Conditional probability is nothing but the probability, say, if I denote it by A given B, A given B, where A, gamma, B are any two events of uh, a sample space S of a random experiment R. Okay. Then P of A given B is nothing but probability of happening of A given that B is already happened okay probability of happening of A given that B is already happened that means assuming that B and even B is already happened, what is the chance that A will happen? Or in other terms, we can say that by obeying the condition B, what would be the chances of A to be winning? That means <coughs> by obeying the condition B, what would be the chance that A will occur or A will happen? That is what you can understand by by the meaning of conditional probability, here we define it as the ratio of P of A injection V over P of B. Okay. So, if you take, uh, if you try to analyze it uh, geometrically, if this represents the sample space S and this represents event A, this represents B, and this common part represents A intersection B, then P of A given B is nothing but P of A intersection B over P of B. That means this shaded area by this circuit. So P of A given B is nothing but this shaded area divided by the entire circle area named as B. Okay, that is what you can understand. Now so, P of B by A can also be 
understood as p of b in section a over p of b so whenever p of a over b and p of a are equal then we call a and b are independent that means imposing the condition b is not at all showing any impact on the happening of a whether you impose b or not that is not at all affecting a that is what p of a by b is equals to p of a means both are, uh, the condition b is not at all influencing a okay if p of a given b is not equals to p of a and p of b given a is not equals to p of b then what we understood is the condition b is influencing the chances of happening of a that means without the condition b the chances of a is different and with the condition b the chances of a are different that means initially the chances may be 60% of our condition obeying the condition b the chances may be reduced to 40% then we call a and b are dependent dependent that means a is been influenced by b as will be is influenced by a so this is what a conditional probability tells us so conditional probability is nothing but under a condition b or obeying that b is already happened what is the chance of happening of a okay and this is the things we come to understand through conditional probability now bayes theorem or bayes rule or bayes law we call it a, with several names it is familiarized in the world with some names which we use for revising probability value based on additional information that is later obtained that means bayes rule is also known as a law of inverse probability or law of causes so so so, so many names are there for bayes law with its uh, practical applications it is known as with uh, known with several names now the thing is here he is telling that bayes law is nothing but a calculator of probability condition probability based on additional information that is later up that means you already know the chances of happening of a but suddenly you came to know some additional information say b then we want to calculate a given b that is what b is law so we suddenly you know you have added with some additional information that b we call it b with that additional information the probability of a may be changed that is denoted by p of a given b and calculating for this for calculating this we need some alternate rather than the definition and that alternate is known as bayes law that's what this paragraph is communicating us okay one key to understanding the essence of bayes theorem is to recognize that we are dealing with sequential events so first first of all uh, how to how we come to know that we must apply bayes law in this situation first of all first and foremost basic thing is if you are dealing with a sequence of events a1 a2 a3 so on an then you can think of bayes law okay otherwise you need not think of bayes law that means sequence of events that means at least more than 3 or 4 events then you can think of bayes law or at least 2 3 events 3 4 events otherwise you need not be thinking think about bayes so that's what this uh, second paragraph is telling us whereby new additional information is obtained for a subsequent event and that new information is used to revise the probability of that initial initial event means a additional information b initially you have an assessment over a that the chance of winning of a is 60% but due to additional information that means latest information uh the chance of happening of uh, a might be 
affected that is denoted by p of a by b to calculate this we will use bayes law that is what simple suppose uh we uh, i'll try to explain it with a simple example suppose the chances of uh, rishi sonak to be elected of course he has been elected as a president of uk but now let us assume uh few days ago the chances of winning of rishi sonak as the president of uh, british or uk is say uh, it's a uh, 50 or 55 percent suddenly an additional information came say saying that uh, an additional information about him uh, has been published or notified that he has helped some uh, business corporation in an unethical way maybe it may be, it may be correct or may not be correct but allegations are made so when people see the news in scrolling that uh, there are some allegations against krishi sana uh, helping in uh, in, uh, in help, helping some uh, business uh, uh, thing in some unethical way then automatically his chances will be influenced so that is what that means when whenever the latest things happen the the probability of happening certain thing may be affected so every time we have to update we have to update our things okay so in this context bayes law will be a better tool to calculate the updated probability revised probability revised we have to revise 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 okay so that we will reach more accuracy in this context the terms of prior probability and posterior probability are commonly used prior means p of e posterior means p of e given b of course we will understand those things better with an example of revise so a prior probability is an initial probability value originally obtained before any additional information is obtained it means just p of e without any additional information uh probability that uh india will win india will enter the semi finals okay suddenly latest information came that the next two may already out of three matches india won two matches now it is awaiting two two matches okay suddenly according to latest information we received that next fourth coming two matches there is a high probability of rains so with that information that means the probability of having rain in those in the in the area where india is going to play the remaining two matches is 90 Five percent. Okay. Suddenly, when when the rain uh, hits the places, then automatically matches will be abandoned, and India will get only one and one. That means maximum two points. That means already it scored four plus two six points. So then, little bit, uh, little uh, little bit, uh, wave wavery. whether india will move into semi finals or not but if the match happens definitely it will win one match at least and it will automatically win so thing is the probability of a uh, happening of a that is india going to enter the semi final that is p of a suddenly when you receive a new information then it is p of a given okay prior probability is nothing but initial probability which is obtained with, before the additional information is received posterior probability is nothing but the probability revised after re receiving the additional information that is p of a given b okay that's what now what is bayes law and how to prove that for this i'd like to take an empty slide and i'll explain this in my way say Uh, let a one, a two, or 
I am going to write the statement base law. I am going to write the statement of base law. Let E1, E2, so on, Ek or En be any n events of a sample space S such that such that EIs are or every every pair of EIs are mutually independent or else we could write it as such that E1, E2, EN are independent events or mutually exclusive events, mutually exclusive events, okay and collectively exhaustive events, collectively exhaustive events. So what we understand E1, E2, EN are any events of S such that E1, E2, so on, EN are mutually exclusive as well as collectively exhaustive. Let A be any other event of S other than EIs. Okay, that means we can understand that. Say this is E1. Let us confine to only four events E1, E2, E3, E4. E1, E2, E3, E4. Okay. Let us suppose that this is A, this ellipse is A. Now here you are clearly observing that E1 and E2 have no common part. So both are mutual exclusive. E1, E3 is no common, sharing no common area. E2, E4 sharing no common area. E2, E3 sharing no common. That means every pair is mutually exclusive. That is first thing. Second thing. A is any uh, event other than E1, E2, E3, E4 that is clearly visible. A is not neither E1 nor E2 nor E3 nor E4. Okay, separate event. Third thing, collectively exist means if you join E1, E2, E3, E4, you are getting complete rectangle that is S. That is collectively exist. Then the base law says that the probability of E k by A probability of E k given A is nothing but probability of A given E k times probability of E k summation i is equal to 1 to n probability of A given E i into probability of A where i is equal to 1 to so on and k is any, any number between 1 to n. That means probability of happening of E k given A is already happened. Is nothing but the ratio of these two things where numerator is nothing but probability of A given E k into probability of E k and denominator is the summation of these probabilities. So how to prove this? How to prove this relationship? Okay, that is what we are going to see now. Now, <coughs> let us look into the proof. So, given E1, E2, so on, En are mutually exclusive events of S. This is a statement expressed in English. Now we have to translate this into mathematics. Mutually exclusive means they share no common part. You can simply write it as E1 intersection, E2 intersection, E3 intersection, EN is equal to MD. No common part. Mutual exclusive means 
they don't see any common inter intersection that means intersection will be empty that's what okay second one given e1 e2 e3 en so on en are collectively collectively exhaustive event collectively exhaustive events okay collectively exhaustive event means what is the meaning of collectively exhaustive that is e1 union e2 union e3 union so on union en is equal to s collectively exhaustive means when you collect all of them and unite that means union will be equal to s okay that is what we have obtained from the given data now what we have to prove we have to prove that for any k for a fixed k between 1 to n we have to start with the lhs lhs is p, p of e k given a now let us go to the definition of conditional probability what is the definition of conditional probability p of a given b is equal to p of a in section b over p of b this is the definition p of a given b is nothing but p of a in section b by b p of e k given a means p of e k in section a by p of e p of e k in section a by p of e now let us write this as p of a in section e k there is no no nothing to be worried because we just uh, you know in section is counted we just change the places e k in section a to e in section e k and come to the denominator if i write the denominator p of a as a in section s do you find any difficulty or do you feel any mistake you know that a is subset to s so a in section s will be a that is why to write a as a in section s there is no mistake okay because a is a subset of s automatically in section goes to the subset so in the place of a you can write a in section s as a in section is always a now after writing this what we have obtained p of a in section e k by <coughs> p of a in section what is this just look at equation 2 equation 2 tells that s is nothing but a1 union a2 union a3 union so on union en so we started with this LHS and we have written the condition probability definition and in the place of A we have written A in section S as A substitutes and we have obtained this one. Okay, by using equation 2 we have reached all this. Let me let me just erase and write the things we have obtained. Okay. Now, see what we have obtained. Yeah, we have obtained P of E K given A is equal to P of uh, A intersection E one union E two union E three union so on E union B N. Okay. Now. You know, distributive law, A in section B union C can be written as A in section B union A in section C. That means the intersection is distributive over union. As well, union is distributive over intersection. That we know in our set theory. So, by using that, uh, we can distribute the intersection over union. Then it becomes A in section E1 union A in section E2 union a in section e3 so on a in section e n e n okay this is what we have done a in section e1 union a in section e2 union a in section e3 right 
now let us recap one of the points in our data that is e1 e2 so on enr mutually exclusive then automatically a in section e1 a in section e2 so on a in section en are also mutually exclusive because e1 e2 en are mutually exclusive their sub parts are a in section e1 a in section e2 a in section en are also mutually exclusive okay this is equation 1 we have already noted from this we could understand that a in section e1 comma a in section e2 so on a in section en are mutually exclusive and we have axiom 3 from uh uh kirchhoff's three axioms we have axiom uh, union axiom that is if m comma n are mutually exclusive events then p of m union n is nothing but p of m plus p of n this is called axiom of union under mutually exclusive events axiom number 3 kolmogorov's axiom okay third third kolmogorov's axiom okay by using this axiom when m and n are mutually exclusive p of m union n is equal to p of p of m plus p of n now here we are having a in section e1 a in section e2 a in section e3 a in section e n is mutually exclusive by using this axiom we uh, we can write it as p of p of a in section e1 plus p of a in section e2 plus p of a in section e n okay we can write it as p of a in section e1 plus p of a in section e2 so on p of a in section e n because mutually exclusive means automatically the union becomes plus okay but already here we have in the denominator we uh, we have sorry this is this is just a p of a in section s i am writing p of a in section s so we have to end p of a in section is equal to p of a in section e1 plus p of a in section e2 so on p of a in section e n now by using this let us go go back to our calculation p of e k in section a we obtain that p of a in section e k by p of a in section s now what we obtain p of a in section e k by p of a in section is just now we obtain p of a in section e1 plus p of a in section e2 plus p of a in section e3 so on p of a in section e k en en okay now let us go to the multiplicative law multiplicative law for dependent events it says that if a comma b are dependent events a comma b are two dependent events okay then p of a in section b can be written as p of a given b into p of b okay so by using this p of if b a b are in dependent then p of a in section b will be the product of p of a given b to p of b by using that here we can write it as here this can be written as p of a given e k into p of e k by using the multiplicative law for dependent events similarly here we can write it as p of a given e1 into p of e1 plus p of a given e2 into p of e2 plus p of a given e3 into p of e3 so on p of a given en into p of e by using the same multiplicative law for dependent events we have written this as product of these two and we have written this as product of these two we have written this as product of these two okay 
Now, by compact fine, what we get P of A given E K into P of K, P of E K is equal to summation of P of A given E I into P of E I, where I is equal to 1 to N. This is the RHS and that is the proof of Bayes law. So, in proving Bayes law, we start, first we started with LHS and we have written the condition probability definition that is A in section E K by a. Here we have written A in section S. In the in the place of S we have written E one union so on, E two union so on, E n, and we have distributed intersection over union, and we have used multi, uh, mutual exclusive even means union becomes plus. Then we have obtained this. Then again applying multiple rule over here, here, and every everywhere. Then we got this and in brief we can write this and that is the proof of Bayes law. Okay. So here in the Bayes law we have suppose let me write P of A E K given A means P of A given E K into P of E K by summation P of A given E I into P of E I is equal to 1 to here we are observing three kinds of probabilities. One is normal probability, another one is conditional probability, another third, another third conditional probability. This is called uh, this is called posterior probability because we are calculating at the end after knowing the information of A. Okay. This is Priory probabilities. This is intermediate probabilities or additional information. So, prior, posterior, and intermediate. So, these three kinds of probabilities we are using. Okay, we are using these two in order to find the posterior probability, that means revisor probability. So, that is the reason why it is also called as law of causes or law of inverse probability. Now, we will try to understand the use of or application of a base rule with the help of an example. Okay. I'd like to share you an example. Yes. So here I am giving an example uh, to understand the base law. There are two machines, machine A, machine B in a factory, and uh, machine A the production capacity is given as okay given as 40 percent and the product or uh, the cap production capacity of machine b is given as 60 percent okay and you know that out of every thousand units produced by a one will be defective and you know that out of every 250 products obtained from B, one will be defective. Basing on this, suppose you have picked one item randomly into your hand and you found that it is defective. What is the probability that it came from machine A and what is the probability that it came from machine B? And what is the probability that it is produced either by A or B? This is the question. Okay. Let me explain this meaning and solve it by using this line. See here, he has given that the production capacity of machine A is 40%. Production capacity of machine B is 60 percent. We will take that probability of A is 40 percent, 40 by 100 that is 0 0.4 and probability of B is 60 percent, 60 by 100 that is 0 0.6. Now, let us introduce one more event called D. D means producing defective item.
producing defective item okay now has given that out of one in thousand items by a will be defective that means for every thousand items came out from the machine a one item will be defective so we can denote it as p of d given a okay p of d given a the condition property is equal to 1 by 1000 he also given that one in every 250 items produced by machine b will be defective that means probability of d given b is equal to 1 by 250 okay you know that the item produced by a is defective that means p of d given a probability of the, the item produced by b is defective d by b is 1 by 250 okay so we have four probabilities the capacity of a capacity of b defectives of a defectives of b P of A, P of B, P of D by A, P of D. Now, now let us go to the climb that we have to calculate. Our climb is if one item is chosen at random and is found to be defective. Okay, what is the probability that it came from machine A? Okay, what is the probability that it came from machine A? Now, if, it's, if you understand the question that he is telling that if you have picked a defective item into your hand, so that is already happened. Already happened event written in the denominator. So defective is picked. What is the chance that it, it is manufactured by machine A? That is what you know. So A given D. If you pick a defective item, probably that it is manufactured by machine A. But this base loss is that B of D by A into P of A by P of D by A into P of A plus p of d by b into p of a. This is the base law. You know, already we have written p of e k given i. E k means p of a given e k into p of e k by the summation. Here, in the place of uh, in the place of uh, e k, we have a and in the place of a we have d that is why here e, e k means even e to n here our events are a and b ok a and b are the even e to n like events that is why here it is now let us substitute the things p of d by a means 1 by 1000 and p of a means uh, 40 by 100 p of d by a means 1 by 1000 into 40 by 100 P of D by means 1 by 1000 into, oh sorry, P of D by means 1 by 250 into P of B that is 60 by 100. Okay. When you cross off the 0, okay, that means uh, you will get 0 0.4, that means 1 by 1000 into 0 0.4 by uh, if you multiply this 4 and div uh, divide with 4 what it becomes 1000 so 1 by 1000 common means 240 by 100 that means 280 by 100 1 by 1000 into 280 by 100 here we have 40 by 100 okay so 100 100 cancels 
Okay, and thousand thousand cancels. Zero zero cancels. Four between one by seven is the probability. Probability that the defective bolt is manufactured by A is one by seven. Okay, in the same way, if you change the question. If you change the question, to the defective bolt is manufactured by B. The thing will be B given D. That means if you pick a defective bolt, what is the probability that it is manufactured by machine B? Then the base law formula will be P of D by B into P of B by P of D by B into P of B. Plus P of D by A into P of E. Okay. Now, what is P of D by B? One by two fifty into sixty by hundred. One by two fifty into sixty by hundred. One by thousand into forty by hundred. Okay. These are the probabilities we have, and we have substituted them in the respective cases. Okay. Now. If you see, if you multiply here with four and divide with four, here it becomes thousand, and one by thousand could be taken as common in the denominator. Okay, and uh, numerator is one by two fifty into sixty by hundred. Inside, we'll be left with two forty by hundred plus forty by hundred. That is two eighty by hundred. Okay, then what happens? Here also you can multiply and divide with four. Then it will be uh, okay. Then what happens? This thousand, this thousand will be cancelled. Hundred, hundred will be cancelled. Four sixty is two forty by two eighty. Zero zero cancels. Four table six times, so six by seven. So probability of the defective bolt coming from B is more than probability of Defective bolt coming from A because it is one by seven. This is six by seven. Automatically, P of B by D is more. And finally, he has asked, "What is the probability that A or B given D? That is, if you pick up a D defective bolt, what is the probability that it is manufactured either A by A or B? Because A and B are mutually exclusive, this becomes A union B given D. And by using the axiom three. A uh, mutual exclusive union axiom becomes A by D plus B by D. We just now calculated that this is one by seven, this is six by seven, and hence the probability will be exactly because only two machines are there. The defect must either come from A or B. There is no that is certainty. That is why it is. So in this way, what we have done in this problem, we have investigated who is responsible behind the defect, whether A or B. So that means Bayes' law helps you to uh, investigate in a reverse way what is the reason or what is the cause. That is why this is called as law of causes or inverse law of probability because we go from back to front. Inverse law of probability. That is why it is one example. We have so many uh, real time application which we come across in the next classes. And uh, with this, I'd like to conclude the lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll meet. With some more uh, interesting concepts on base law, especially base law and machine learning, Bayesian approach in machine learning and applications of base law. So I am now signing off. Thank you. So here you can see you can visit this reference book for more knowledge on base law. The secret of the Kapoor. Thanks for listening. Thank you all. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.